Okay, what is up my form force? I hope you are doing well. Okay, we shall enter chapter 5 today. It will be a very short chapter and there will be a very short exercise. Okay, okay, let's begin. Okay, chapter 4, uh, sorry, chapter 5. Okay, metabolism and enzymes. Okay, today our focus is enzyme. Okay, our focus is enzyme. Okay, we have already learned the three main classes uh, last chapter. Okay, let's learn how to break them down. Okay, so first and foremost, very importantly, we need to look at how um, important, okay, the characteristic of enzyme is. Okay, we look at the characteristic. Okay, number one, all enzymes, they are proteins. Okay, they are tertiary structure. Remember what is tertiary structure? Okay, we have primary, a long chain of amino acid and then coiling secondary structure and then 3d shape the tertiary structure okay so protein so enzyme is a tertiary structure okay so let's look at number two okay let's look at number two enzymes are biological catalysts okay so what is catalyst catalyst you will learn this in chemistry catalyst is basically what speeds up okay a chemical reaction okay that is a catalyst okay so enzyme will speed up the breakdown of food that's why it's a catalyst okay so number three enzymes are not destroyed at the end of an enzymatic reaction it can be reused and needed in small quantity okay very important it can be reused and needed in small quantity okay remember we enzyme is not ex ex exhaustive okay you can reuse enzyme okay and only small quantity is needed to break down a lot of food okay so uh number four okay enzyme reactions are highly specific what does it mean one enzyme can only break down a type of food and not the other okay so we'll talk about it later so active uh, we have something called active site i'll talk about this later okay can only bind to a specific substrate okay what are all these okay let's look at the um mechanism of enzyme so how do they work okay this is following something called the lock and key hypothesis okay lock and key hypothesis why do we call it a hypothesis because nobody has seen this before this is only a hypothesis it's not a theory okay it's not proven but it's generally accepted okay so how does it work okay think of it this way enzyme have something called an active site okay has, has an active site okay what enzyme wants to digest is what we call a substrate okay a substrate okay let's just assume this substrate is a sucrose okay it's a sucrose so this enzyme is a sucrase okay remember sucrose the enzyme is sucrase okay sucrase can only break down sucrose not lactose not maltose only sucrose that's why it is highly specific okay why is it highly specific because of the active site can you see the 3d shape of the active site only binds to the 3d shape of a sucrose okay maltose doesn't match and uh maybe lactose also doesn't match okay only sucrose can match this thing that's why we call it a lock and key because the key can only open a lock okay make sense okay so when they bind together enzyme and substrate bind together they form something called a enzyme substrate complex simple enough okay enzyme substrate complex this is a very complex okay and then when it breaks down it becomes product okay it becomes product so what does a sucrose molecule break down into it breaks down into a glucose and a fructose ah this is in your last chapter so you have to remember this okay so this is what we call the product the product will leave the active site and then the active site is free again to bind to another substrate okay that's why it's only needed a small amount because we can reuse them okay so this is the main part of this chapter okay so the explanations i'll leave it up for you to read okay i'll highlight some of the key points okay the enzyme is the lock substrate is the key okay active site have specific shape okay uh enzyme substrate complex it will form product okay and so on and so forth okay so there is something here called the inhibitor what is inhibitor as the name says it will inhibit any enzyme okay because somehow it has the same shape as the 
substrate. Okay, so it will compete with your substrate to bind to the enzyme. Okay, so once the enzyme is is bond bond by the uh, inhibitor, the enzyme doesn't work anymore. Okay, because I have something occupying the space. Okay, one of the example here is something called this. All this start. Okay, I want to show you this. Okay, what is this? This is what we call a lipase inhibitor. You know what is lipase? Lipase is what uh, breaks down fats. So if my lipase is inhibited by this olistat, I cannot break down fats and I cannot absorb fats, I won't get fat. That's why this medicine is used to treat obesity. Okay, it's used to treat obesity because I can't digest fat, I can't absorb fat. Of course, this is a very short-term solution. Okay, you still need to keep your diet in check. Okay, anyway, so how is enzyme produced? Okay. Uh, I already I have already talked about this in chapter two. Remember my sewing machine story? How how does a factory make a t-shirt? Okay, we actually we will learn it here. Okay, but I already taught you uh, earlier on. So uh, let me repeat this. Okay, so everything starts with the nucleus because your DNA is your boss. Remember, so DNA will go and tell the sewing machine to start making t-shirt. Who's the sewing machine? That's your ribosome. Okay, ribosome will start synthesizing protein. Okay, synthesizing protein, and then after synthesis, after I make the T-shirt, I'll put it onto the conveyor belt. What is the conveyor belt called? It is called my RAF ER. Okay, and then before I can sell the T-shirt, I need to package them, modify them. I will send it to my uh, Golgi and Peritus. Okay, what is a vesicle? Transport vesicle is basically what is not done yet. It will package and then send it to the Golgi and Peritus. Okay, basically it's a mag. Okay, so Golgi and Peritus, what does it do? It will modify the protein. Okay, and then it will make secretory vesicle means i will secrete it out of the cell and then you have your mem your, your your enzyme okay so uh very simple story okay you really learned this okay so let's look at a, one of the most important part of this chapter which is the factors affecting enzyme activity so what affects enzyme activity you have four okay one two three four please remember them by heart this is the easiest part to score and also carries the most one of the most marks. Okay, so first is my pH value. Okay, number one is pH value. Okay, uh, all enzymes has their have their own specific their own optimum pH. Okay, let's say for pepsin, remember it's pepsin. Pepsin is what is in your stomach that digest protein. Your stomach is acidic. Remember, so it its optimum pH is two. Okay, if you put it into your mouth, which is pH 7, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, so amylase, which is in your mouth, okay, it's pH 7, okay, makes sense. And then trypsin, trypsin is found in your duodenum. Okay, remember what is duodenum? That's the beginning of your small intestine. So your duodenum is slightly alkaline because it has something called the bowel, remember, the bitter, bitter stuff. Okay, that's why it's pH 8.5. Okay, so... uh. How do you explain what happens if the 3D shape changes? Uh, sorry, uh, when you change the pH. Okay, so when exceed optimum pH, okay, the enzyme denature. Okay, please remember this word very, very importantly. What is mean by denature? Denature be means the enzyme is spoiled, broken. The active site will change shape. I cannot bind to any substrate anymore. I cannot digest anything. That is what we call denature. Okay, so the enzyme will denature. Why? Because if I change my pH, my chemical structure changes as well, okay? Bonding of enzyme is broken, 3D shape is altered, okay? Like I said, the active site has a very specific 3D shape. If you change it, the substrate cannot bind to it anymore. My key cannot unlock my lock, so I cannot digest anything, okay? So pH is very important. So what is ROER? There's a legend there that says, okay? rate of enzymatic reaction or you straight away can say just say rate of reaction i would accept okay just say ror okay rate of reaction okay so uh this is reversible okay renaturation uh, i don't want to use this complicated word just say it is reversible okay means i can okay reverse it back okay next let's look at temperature so optimum is 37 Okay, 37. That's why it's very important for you to remain at 37 degrees Celsius. If you have fever, you lost you will lose appetite. Okay, because your enzyme is denatured. So same explanation here. Okay. Uh every 10 degree increase in temperature, okay. Uh ROR is double until it reaches optimum. So let's look at the graph. Let's split it into half. Okay, at the lower end, the more I heat it up, 
the more the the higher the rate of reaction okay until optimum if i hit it some more it won't increase anymore it will go down okay that's why the optimum is at the middle okay so as i go up some more okay uh the rate of reaction will stop okay enzyme will denature enzyme will denature at 60 degrees celsius okay and this is irreversible okay when temperature breaks down an enzyme okay that's it okay that means no more okay i need to make a new enzyme again okay so let's look at substrate concentration and enzyme concentration okay these two they uh kind of complements each other okay think of it this way okay let's say you have three toilets here okay you have three toilets here okay so uh and then you have substrate okay three substrate okay the toilet is your enzyme okay and then your substrate uh this is your substrate okay the people are the substrates okay so let's look at substrate concentration okay the more i increase the substrate concentration of course the more the higher the rate of reaction okay makes sense until a level okay can you see the graph here it stops okay two percent enzyme it stops five percent enzyme it stops why because i can only increase the substrate so much before all the enzymes are occupied okay so imagine this way okay so let's say now i have one substrate okay i have one substrate so uh i'll go into one toilet one one person will go to the toilet if i increase another person ah two person will go to two toilets okay and then i increase another three will go to three toilets okay can you see the rate is increasing but i put it into four five six seven it's not going to increase any further because my enzyme is limiting now okay i have only limited amount of toilets here so uh all active sites of enzymes are fully occupied okay very important point here enzyme become the limiting factor so now my enzyme is limited i cannot increase anymore the more i increase the graph is just gonna be flat okay so uh that's common sense okay so enzyme concentration it's the other way around okay so now let's change the story okay i have three substrate so when I put one toilet, okay, so that's the real reaction. And if I add another toilet, yay, higher real reaction. I add another toilet, another enzyme, yay, again, higher real reaction. But if I increase the toilet some more to four, five, six, seven, eight, but my substrate remains at three, sorry, my substrate remains at three, nothing's gonna happen. The rate is just gonna stop stop it's just gonna level it's just gonna level it's just gonna become flat okay same story as just now just now enzyme becomes our limiting factor so now it's the other way around my substrate has become my limiting factor okay unless you increase the substrate some more the rate is just gonna stay the same okay so very important these two are the complementary ones okay they complement each other and then of course your pH and temperature okay so let's look at our uh, use of enzyme where do we use this in daily life okay so let's look at food industry okay let's look at food industry okay so uh first we use protease okay remember what is protease protease is what digests your protein okay protease protein okay one of it is papain okay where is papain found this is asked in a year of spm okay papain is found in your papaya okay papaya can be used to digest protein do you know that okay so where do they use this they use this to tenderize meat you know it's tenderized meat okay let's say now you buy a piece of lean meat okay lean meat means no fats lah. okay lean meat is very hard to chew so i need to tenderize it i need to make it softer how do i make it softer i need to break down the protein some of it i need to break some of it inside okay so how do i break this there are two ways to tenderize number one you use a hammer called a meat tenderizer okay there are spikes on it you just hit on the meat you just hit it okay, until the meat becomes softer that is the barbaric way of doing it if you want the chemical the a chemistry way the the modern way okay civilized way to do it you use papain okay you can buy this in the powder form in supermarket you just put them under the meat and then you just let it sit for one or two hours once it's done you cook it and then the meat will taste very soft very tender okay if you have if you are too lazy to buy just put some papaya slices into it and then let it sit it will do the same thing okay so papain papain is a very famous protease okay let's look at cellulase Okay, we will learn this 
uh, in the next few chapters, okay, we don't have this, that's why we can't digest cellulose. Okay, that's why you eat veggie, you are not gonna digest cellulose, you're not gonna become fat. Cows have this. Okay, cows can digest cellulose. Okay, so eat your salad, kids. Don't say that salad makes you fat. Yes, it will make the cow fat, but it will not make you fat, okay? Unless you can produce cellulase, okay, which makes you Superman, one of a kind, okay? So, cellulase. Okay, so let's look at renin. Renin is basically the same thing. Uh, it's found in your stomach. It is used to coagulate milk, okay? We used to learn this in Form 2, but they changed the syllabus now. They already omitted this thing. Okay, we used to learn this okay, during my time. So, renin is used to coagulate milk. Why is this so important? Imagine if a baby needs milk to survive. Okay, if you if if a baby doesn't have a doesn't have renin, if he or she drinks the milk, the milk will just slide all the way through the intestine. Okay, so I cannot digest them. So what is this renin? What does this renin do? So this renin will when the milk goes into your stomach, it will change the milk into solid, basically like cheese, so that it doesn't flow away. You can digest the protein. Okay, that's why when baby drinks milk and when he or she pukes the milk out sometimes, okay, you can see like a uh, cheese, okay, very lumpy in it uh, because of this running. Okay, so interesting. Okay, brewing industry, what is zymase? Zymase is produced by yeast. Okay, oh, this is the most amazing uh, enzyme, okay, the, the microorganism and enzyme. It is used to make alcoholic drink for fermentation, okay, beer, okay, whiskey, wine, or whatever you name it, okay, without zymase, we can't make alcohol, okay, so, uh, also, this can be used to make bread, okay, zymase is also used to make bread, okay, so, let's look at detergent, okay, this is found in your washing powder, okay, your, uh, washing powder, okay, your, your, take a look at the washing powder, you open it, when you look inside, they are like, color bits in it okay those are not for decoration those are actually enzyme so what enzyme does your washing powder has okay it has amylase it has protease it has lipase okay so what does it do if you have uh, a carbohydrate stain like sugar stain on it okay you can the amylase will just eat it away digest it away if you have egg white stain okay your protease will wash it away Okay, if you have oily stain, now this is the most important. If you have oily, because we get oil on our shirt all the time, okay, we produce a sebum, the oil. So who washes away the oil? Okay, that's your lip paste. Okay, so uh, where else? Your leather industry is not so common. Your trypsin, okay, they will remove hair from hides. What is hide? Hide is the leather we want. Okay, so you have animal hair on it. So when you use trypsin, you will strip this hair away. Okay. So there you go, that's it for this chapter, okay? Of course, I'll separate this video into two parts, which is the exercise part and of course, the which is this one, the lesson part, okay? Hope this video is helpful, okay? Like I said, very short chapter, okay? Uh, this video is getting a bit too long, sorry, okay? Just watch it a few more times. So uh, let me recap the most important part, characteristic of enzyme, okay? And then the uh, mechanism of enzyme, and then of course, your factor. Okay, three of the most important parts of this chapter. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. Okay, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next video, which is my exercise. Okay, I will post the hard copy of the, uh, sorry, the soft copy of the exercise on the Google group again. Okay, so I uh, hope you have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.